All right, here we are in Port Colden. And uh, I'll give you some history, and this one's a little bit more of a personal one. Old water thing. This is where my house used to stand in beginning of August 2010. My house burned down, and I was trapped trapped on the second story. Um, woke up at like 1 o'clock in the morning, and uh, smoke was in the room. Um, then uh, Jolene was there. She got out the front door, but I didn't get there as quickly. Introduced a new oxygen source, and uh, I was trapped upstairs. Breathed it in and passed out. Breathed in all the black smoke that came in. And uh, when I woke up, I was on the upstairs floor, which was right about there. And uh, managed to crawl to a window, get the window open, climbed out onto the front porch and jumped to safety right about here. So, this was the house I grew up in. It was an old canal boat captain's house in the Mars Canal. Mars Canal is right in the back here, farther line of trees, way back there. Um, 1874 map shows it was owned by R.R. Lisk. Uh, my stepdad's place is next door. That's the Woolston House, which was originally the Mineral Spring Hotel. It sat on the corner of Mineral Springs Road and Route 57 uh, in the past. When um, Duesenberry, who laid out Port Colden and uh, built the manor house and everything across here, uh, when Duesenberry laid out Port Colden, he had the Mineral Springs Hotel dismantled and uh, rebuilt on the corner of what's now Port Colden Road. It used to be Main Street, Port Colden, up until 911, not 911, but 911 uh, system took effect and they changed it to Port Colden Road. This is my shed and I'm here going through stuff all these years later uh, because the property is, it, it, my grandfather still owns it and it's now sold. And I've still got stuff left over from the fire in here that's kind of hard to go through. Um, it's hard enough, you know, uh, coming back to the spot here, I figured I grew up here and I was just going to eventually either inherit or, or buy it from my family and I was kind of set for life, but it's, uh, it's kind of interesting. It's like a canceled future. Shed used to sit back here. Uh, my cats that I lost in the fire are buried right over there. Um, just to the right of the fence and over by the where the shed used to stand, right about in the middle of the frame here. So, uh, yeah, this is where I grew up. Remnants of my tree house in this uh, Norway maple are still up in there. There was a second one over there. We had two tree houses that we made. Um, but, yeah, this uh, the house that was here was uh, 1822, was on the deed for it. We believe it was originally built as... Uh, workers house for the people building the Morris Canal at the time um, as was the uh, the house next door which is much more altered but uh, most of the houses were very similar frame to this one and uh, the wood in it was uh, mostly sawmilled so it could have been uh, actually my family that that did that uh, my uh, great 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 grandfather Michael Klein Allen had a portable sawmill and uh, he worked on the property adjacent to the boat base and near Plain 6 on the Morris Canal back this way and uh, uh, pre-cut planks and such for the uh, the canal because they built uh, canal boats in Port Colden. So yeah, I'm going through a lot of my old stuff. There's, there's a sigh. And there's just tons of pictures and stuff that I'm I'm still going through because there are some in there that's salvageable. I've already found so much stuff. Um, but it's a, it's a process. Here's my old bottle cap collection. I don't really see any more. Some of those are kind of rare. I mean, I'm going to keep some of the stuff, but a lot of it is, unfortunately, going to be going. So, if anybody's interested in some uh, Ninja Turtle action figures... From way back, I've got huge collection of toys in here that are, you know, from my attic that weren't destroyed. Just need a little hosing off. If anybody's interested in them, uh, let me know.
my mom's old barber chairs from when she used to have the, uh, the studio in town are in here. So some of it's my mom's stuff there. I've actually gone through a lot of it, but there's a lot to go. But anyway, there's a little bit of my personal history in Port Colden and how it ties into some of the local history. Uh, the house was just sticks, so it was demolished and uh, will be sold soon. So I lived here from uh, 1982 until 1999, and then I moved out. And I moved back in 2001, rented from my grandfather, and I lived here until it burned down in August 2010. Um, I wasn't expected to survive. Uh, I, uh, I was in intensive care for a week, and they almost lost me after three days being in there. And um, I uh, refused to let go, and um, a week after I was released from the hospital, I led a 20-mile hike. And, uh, and I had a 103 fever and was in rough shape again the next day. But I haven't given up, and... Um, I haven't really missed a, a weekend hiking since. If it weren't for all the hiking I was doing and my cardiorespiratory endurance, I certainly would have been dead. So, uh, it's also, uh, I can't thank them enough. I lost my job shortly after that. I lost all my benefits and the hiking group raised $10,000 in a week, which covered my benefits that I so badly needed during this time. Um, so, I didn't even have to ask for help. They were just all there for me. So I'm uh, not only lucky to be alive, I'm lucky to have had the support system that I've had because uh, if I didn't, then I wouldn't be here. So again, thank you, and uh, I'll keep doing the hikes every week, and uh, everybody's welcome to come, and that'll be part of my thanking everybody for the rest of my life as long as I'm able to do it. So uh, there you go little trauma there, but I'm alive. I'm carrying on. Thanks for watching.